Movies about historical events or historical cultures are some of my favorite, but there are five movies that got things way wrong, and today we're gonna count them down. In general, cinema is cinema, and you're trying to get as many things right as possible if your movie is based on a true story or true events or whatever the case is. But there are some where they're just way off. But does it really matter? Well, let's start off with number five, Jurassic Park. If you know a lot about dinosaurs, you know that this movie took a lot of liberties. For example, the main huge important scene, that dinosaur is called the Dilophosaurus. And in real life, it was about twice that size, it didn't have a frill, and it didn't spit venom. So it really was not even a real dinosaur. It'd be like presenting an elephant with wings. Like it was that far off. It doesn't matter. No, not really. Because if you really look at Jurassic Park, what it is is they brought dinosaurs back genetically engineered and likely it's you know if you're taking liberties if you're going to do that if that was even possible you'd be bringing back animals that weren't the same as they were before anyway for more on that we did a whole video about de-extinction last week right here thanks everyone for watching it the most watched video on the channel so far but back to jurassic park the most important character that is a dinosaur throughout the series is the velociraptor we know that velociraptors are about the size of a turkey okay they're really small in comparison to the human sized velociraptor we see in the film. So in real life, velociraptors are not six feet tall. They're not gonna be running around like that. They do get some things right. They do have that curved type of hook-like toe. They are going to hunt in packs, but these animals were really small. Now with that said, if they wanted to do something to you, they probably could, but you could at least punt it a bit if you really were trying to get away from it rather than having to tackle it like a bear or a kangaroo. To save himself, he launches a right hand to the kangaroo's snout. I'm not saying you should tackle bears or kangaroos, by the way, I'm just saying these things were small. They are up to the size of your waist, maybe. I will say in 1993, the way that those dinosaurs were depicted was probably accurate to what science was telling the people who were writing that movie. Because in 1993, we didn't know as much about dinosaurs as we do now. But 30 years on, they really haven't changed that much. But things like the T-Rex still roaring in that way, we know now that T-Rexes likely had a grumble, a very low pitch grumble, and that's the way that they communicated with each other. Kind of, sort of similar to the way that crocodiles and alligators communicate with each other right now. I save the most historically inaccurate for number four, Braveheart. If you like that time period, you already know how bad Braveheart was at taking liberties. And Mel Gibson has shown up in a lot of my research, a lot of the films, he took a lot of liberties, even if he wasn't the one directing them. In Braveheart, for example, William Wallace was a real person. This is correct. And this is a similar time frame, although it might've been a few years off, but William Wallace really was a character that was kind of sort of similar to the way he was depicted in the movie. However, he was never called Braveheart. If anybody was called Braveheart, it would have been King Robert the Bruce. Now, after his death, his friend James Douglas paraded his heart around. So he was dead, he had his heart taken from his body, his friend paraded his heart into a crusade, so into battle, he was fighting the Moors at the time. I'm not gonna get much into that and how that battle worked in the crusades, but at this time, he was carrying this heart in what was basically a casket for a heart, and once he realized he was surrounded, he threw the casket with the heart inside of it, and he shouted, onwards, Braveheart, Douglas shall follow thee or die. Now, did this actually happen? Who knows? But that is the story or the most accurate account. There is no account of him ever being called Braveheart, William Wallace being him. There are a few things also. William Wallace was described as being poor in the beginning of the movie when he was a child. It turns out that he actually came from minor noblemen. The tartans that were being worn in the movie, those even weren't even really a thing until hundreds of years later. So what they did is they tried to make the most Scottish movie more Scottish by picking more Scottish things that had really nothing to do with that story or even that time period. Coming at number three, my favorite movie of all time, Apocalypto. I actually watched it a few days ago. We had a solar eclipse, it was the coolest thing in the world. And in this movie, they show a solar eclipse halting human sacrifice. Now this is possible. It is possible this has happened and there is accounts from much later in time of a solar eclipse being thought to be a divine experience and then battles completely stopping. Oh, uh, well, the God had his thirst for blood quenched or whatever the case is. 
However, there are some historical inaccuracies, although it is one of the best put together movies of that time period. Mesoamerican culture is my favorite type of history to study. The sacrifice scene, which is one of the most important scenes in the movie, where they're reaching into a sacrifice's chest, pulling out their still beating heart, showing it to them, then beheading them and throwing the head down the stairs of the temple, well, these temples are pretty similar to what you'd actually see in this area. However, doing this exact ritual, there is no account of Mayans doing this. This is more of an Aztec type sacrifice, where with Mayans, it's possible that this happened. And there are places in the Yucatan Peninsula where there were racks for the heads of beheadings for the beheaded that were sacrificed. However, the way that it is depicted in the movie is much more Aztec than Mayan. So were there Mayan sacrifices like this? Yes. Was it like that, probably not. And if you're unfamiliar with this time period and these cultures, Aztecs in some instances would kill 80,000 people, 80,000 people as a sacrifice to the gods. In the movie, a solar eclipse happens, total totality, so day turns into night, which none of those people would have ever seen before. And then they stop killing people because they thought that's the god saying they've had their thirst and it'll start raining now. It's all over a drought, by the way, which is, according to the time period, would be accurate. There was a pretty bad drought at that time. However, there's some small things. For example, if you don't know, a lot of the rainforest in Central and South America was planted by humans. Early humans who participated in agriculture changed the way that the jungle was. So there's new plants that shouldn't be where they are. This is ra a rather new theory that the jungle would have been much less dense. There would have been much more farmland. And the fact that this was a hunter-gatherer society in the first place, there's really no record of this time period of there being those hunter-gatherer groups in that region, it would have been mostly agriculture, more domestication. So the idea that a big city sent people to come and capture those to be sacrificed from other villages, that definitely happened. But these villages wouldn't really look like that. But again, my favorite movie, I love it. I love that they did it in the actual language that would have been spoken at the time. They actually did it where they're supposed to have been in the first place, and they built actual cities rather than using CGI for a lot of it. So a great movie, but a little bit inaccurate. For number two, we're gonna talk about 10,000 BC, which is a movie that came out in 2008. I watched one time and didn't remember anything about. And then I remembered, oh yeah, they showed Willy Mammoths helping to build the pyramids, which was definitely not a thing. Now there's some minor things you notice right away. For example, this is set by in Egypt, so the Nile River. The Nile River flows north and the wind goes south, which makes the Nile one of the easiest waterways to navigate in the world. It's been used for transport and travel forever. But in the movie, you see a ship going north with the sails up, which obviously wouldn't have made sense. You don't put your sails up when you're going against the wind and then the direction of the flow goes in that. So this is like a really tiny thing. But then there's big things like the mammoths galloping. Mammoths are really closely related to modern day elephants and modern day elephants kind of shuffle their feet. They don't gallop like that. So this is really inaccurate. We're almost positive that they could not have moved in this way. And then other things that we know now too, for example, for a long time, we thought it was mostly slaves carrying out the labor building the pyramids, which there was slaves being used to build the pyramids. However, the majority of the labor had to be skilled. It was a skilled job. So you had skilled laborers who were paid and you had craftsmen who were doing the majority of the labor. A few other things too, there's a scene with a ship with an iron holding cage. The Iron Age wasn't for thousands more years, I think 1200 around that year BC. There was also men on horses. The earliest that we know of men domesticating horses, men being man, humankind, was 3,500 BC. So this is thousands of years early. So they just took a lot of liberties and put a bunch of historical stuff together that didn't, kind of like how Jurassic Park puts animals that were from one era and then another millions of years apart together. They kind of did the same thing in this movie, just jumbling up a bunch of historic stuff that really wasn't even close to that time. Number one, Gladiator. Now this is a movie that most people have seen and they took a lot of liberties, a ton. Now the whole point of the movie or the name of the movie is Gladiator. It centers around gladiators. And although during that time period, there definitely were free-for-alls and fights to the death, 
Gladiators likely were never fought to the death like that. Gladiators were really valuable. Gladiators weren't sent out to die in most cases and most of the time. Generally what you'd see is gladiators would go fight one on one and then a battle would end at first blood oftentimes or surrender. Generally between gladiators, there wasn't a fight to the death and it certainly wasn't a free for all where one of them is going to get maimed badly or even killed. However, there were bloody battles like this with say POWs, for example, slaves, for example. So there were definitely these big giant battles where people would die and it would be a fight to the death, but it wouldn't be between gladiators. And that's the main takeaway from this movie because it kind of defeats the whole storyline. And there was a few other things too, uh, weapon inaccuracies where they had certain weapons that weren't around for another hundreds of years. But realistically, this is a pretty good movie. They got a lot of it right, but the main thing, it was kind of a big thing and they got that wrong. Let me know in the comments section what you think the most inaccurate historical movie is and give me an example down below. Please hit like and subscribe, it really helps the channel. And because I do videos every weekend, that means I'll see you in the next one.